Praise the Lord. Close your eyes and let us pray. Our Father, we thank you very much today. We bless your name because you brought us together again. So that we can share once again in this living world. And so you can give us the very bread of life. We're asking, O oh Lord, this bread of life will never be tired of receiving the truth in Jesus' name. Fill our cups, Lord. We lift it up to you. Come, quench the thirst in our soul. Bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. Bread of heaven, feed us until we are fully satisfied and our feet are put on the path of righteousness that leads to heaven lord we pray none of us here leaders workers leading your people will be tired of this word coming out of your mouth in jesus name write these words upon the tables of our heart so that lord our lives as well as our ministry will be profitable to the people of god and will be satisfactory pleasing unto you and will get us eventually to your very presence in heaven at last in jesus name be with us tonight help us lord to look away from everything around and just to concentrate on the word you have given us so that this word will do good in every one of our hearts thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray we have the privilege as well as the opportunity the ministry of counseling the people that have just come to the lord and uh, what the lord is asking of us is that we'll point out the right way of the lord unto these people that have come to know the lord you know it's very important many of these people actually as they have come to the lord they still do not understand the fullness of the gospel and they do not understand the step by step by step that the way of salvation that god himself has outlined for us in the bible they've gone to the crusade and what they have heard maybe as they have responded there are some of them that have responded genuinely some of them do not understand why they raised up their hands some of them do not understand the decisions they have taken and it is now in your hand it's now in our hands to be able to show them reveal to them the way of the lord that's why tonight i'm talking to you on revealing the right way revealing the right way and we talk of the way christ talked about the way isaiah talked about the way jeremiah talked about the way david in the psalms talked about the way paul the apostle talked about the way there is a way and there is just one way and we need to show the people that want to get to heaven what that way is how that way is described in scripture because it's just that single way that can lead them to life eternal in ecclesiastes chapter 10 ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 the labor of the foolish we raise every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city and uh, we don't have a continuing city here but there is a city up above it's a better country it's a greater city it's the heavenly jerusalem it's a place where christ has gone to prepare for his own people many people sing about it they know there is a place that is called heaven and they want to be there and they labor and labor but then it says the labor of the foolish we raise every one of them because he does not know how to get into the city how is that so because in matthew chapter 7 matthew chapter 7 from verse 13 enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in their heart because straight narrow 
is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it and so you find many people because the way is so narrow and although there's a sign but there in the scriptures telling us the way that leads to heaven they have not known they have not discovered they do not understand that this narrow way that will take only you and jesus without any of your sins they do not know that is the only way that leads to life everlasting because broad is the way and there are multitudes in that broad way and because they see the multitude they feel because multitudes are taking that way they feel that is a sign that that way is all right for them and so they remain foolish and that's why ecclesiastes tells us the labor of the foolish we raise every one of them no exception because he does not know how to get to the city in isaiah chapter 35 isaiah chapter 35 verse 8 and an highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of what there's no other way there's no other way it's the way of holiness follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord there's no other way as obedient children not fashioning yourself according to your former laws in your ignorance but as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it says i be ye holy for i am holy seeing that these things shall be so what manner of men and what manner of women ought we to be in all holy conversation and christ that he might sanctify the people is suffered without the gate and now he tells us that that way of salvation he has revealed unto all he is not teaching us that we are abandoned we deny ourselves and then we leave the way of ungodliness and we become righteous godly and holy because he gave himself that he might purify unto himself a peculiar people a people that is zealous of good works without holiness no man shall see the lord and so a way shall be there and it shall be called the way of holiness many people don't know that's the only way that leads to life eternal that's why you, as you are revealing the way for the people to the people that have come to know the lord in this crusade you are telling them this is the truth and then it says it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over each but it shall be for those the wayfaring men the fools shall not err therein and let's consider some points number one the ignorance of foolish people the ignorance of foolish people you see already we have been told that the foolish people they labor and labor and yet they do not know how to get into the city and it's because they are ignorant the ignorance of foolish people in psalm 73 psalm 73 verse 22 so foolish was i and ignorant i was as a beast before thee he joins the word foolish or the word ignorant he said so foolish was i and ignorant he did not know the way of the lord if you read the whole chapter you will understand what the psalmist was saying he saw the prosperity of the wicked the people that were not serving god arrived and he saw the provisions they had the very many things they had and then he began to feel why do i cleanse my hand why am i remaining holy and righteous these people that do not believe in holiness and righteousness and purity of heart and life 
they appear to be doing well. Then he said, until I went to the house of God, and it was revealed unto me what their end will be. And now he confessed, he said, I'm even ashamed of this. I was ignorant and I was foolish. And many of these people too, it's the same thing. They do not know that this is the only way. And because they feel, after all, that other church there, eh, they seem to be doing fine. In fact, you know, you enjoy yourself. The dancing, the drumming, and the, you know, everything that is permitted. And it's like, eh, you just come from the nightclub, and you come to the church club. And there is no difference, only that the one in the nightclub, eh, it's in the night, and the one of the church club is Sunday morning. And only that you are feeling guilty over there when you are outside doing the dancing, but there is no guilt now because the pastor and his wife and the leaders and their wives and the members of the church and the deacons, everybody, they are also on the floor and they are, they are dishing it out. So now you, you just join them and it's ignorance. They feel that because if so and so does it and so and so does it, it's all right and it's not all right. And eventually, if you don't get to them in time, that is, the people that have come to know the Lord, and you don't show them the way, the good way, the old way, the right way, the holy way, the way of holiness, if you don't show them in time, and the problem is, by the time you get to them, they are hardened in that evil way. In Jeremiah chapter 6, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, does says the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, See and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. A time may come if you don't do the follow up in time, the counseling in time. And the people that do not know the way of the Lord, they grab them and they put them into the broad way. They get so used to it. By the time you come, when you remember, when you see their cars, the things they feel, and you try to get at them, and you are showing them the good way of the Lord, it's too late. Because they'll just tell you, we're sorry, we're settled now, we're in another good church, and we're doing fine there. In fact, since we got there, life has been happy, and life has been free, and now there's liberty to do whatever you can do. And we used to feel guilty doing that thing, but we're now in Christ, and we can do it without any penalty at all. Get to them in time. In Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Verse 15. For these people's heart is what's gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. You see that? Now, you, you understand that the word of God makes us to understand that now as the way is coming to them, and the word of salvation is coming to them, their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time, it says in that verse 15, lest at any time they shall see with their eyes and hear with their ears and shall understand with their heart and shall be converted and I shall heal them. And so you, uh, you see what the word of God is telling us from the very leaves of Jesus Christ that a time comes when the people even deliberately close their eyes, shut their ears, and they will not hear the true way that leads to heaven. And of course, they are foolish and they remain foolish. That's why the Lord is telling us, get to them in time before their hearts are hardened and before they settle down in that evil corrupt way which will not lead them to life eternal point number two the importance of faithful preachers the importance of faithful preachers uh, you see it's very important that you get to those people and when you get to them you are faithful Faithful in the teaching of the word of God to them as we are counseling them. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 30 and 31. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias. 
and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? This man had been in Jerusalem. He went to worship. He had heard the word that those preachers read to him. And he was still searching because he had not got what he went for. And so the Spirit of the Lord directed Philip to join him. And then he asked him a question, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I? Except some man shall guide me. And he desired Philip that he will come up and sit with him. Although he could read, educated enough to read, educated enough to have a high position in society, educated enough at that time, as rare as it was for a single person to possess a chariot. He possessed a chariot as high like an elite, a professional, as high and educated as he was. He read, but he couldn't understand. And he took Philip to come and join him in the chariot and explain the word of life. The word he read, explain to him. That's why it's so important you'll be faithful. And you go to these people, although they might be high, even more educated than you are, yet it takes the Spirit of God to throw light on the Scriptures and then to bring out the truth that they need to know so that the way of life will be pointed out to them. In Romans chapter 10, Romans 10, Verse 13 and verse 14. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? The Lord is calling upon you that you will help them to hear the true word of God that leads to life eternal you will go and counsel them but you know in your counseling you need to have some objectives in mind in deuteronomy chapter 6 deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 23 and he brought us out note the word out from this that he might bring us in, not the word in, to give us the land, which is where unto our fathers, out and in. That's very important. That you need to explain to them, the Lord has brought them out of the world, that he may bring them into the kingdom. And except those two things take place, there is no conversion. Except the two things are in place. They are not children of God yet. They have not started in the way. When they get to that gate, they are coming out of everything that has been in their long history. They stand at that gate. And just standing there doesn't bring them into the kingdom. They repent of all they have done. They turn away from everything that they have done in the past. Then, by faith, they enter in. And at that moment, when they can say, where I was, I am no more. I'm out of something and I'm in to another thing. It's that transition that takes place that makes them to become now the children of God. Remember, out of or out from into the kingdom of God. And it's so important you make it very clear unto them in First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4, verses six, uh, 15 and 16. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing so, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And you will keep to the word of God, to the doctrine of the word of God. Not just that you have the mental assent. You believe it in the head. You believe it in your heart. You practice it. It will show in your life. And then you will point a good way unto them. This is the way. Walk therein. 
Number three. Number one was the ignorance of foolish people. Number two, the importance of faithful preachers. Number three, the impact of fearless presentation. As you go to these people, and they may put forth as if they don't understand. God is sending you to them as their pilot to heaven. God is sending you to them as a driver that is uh, driving that vehicle that leads them to the city of their desire but they don't know and they can put up a fight as if you are their enemy and you are the greatest friend that they have and so that's why whatever they put forth and whatever they demonstrate and however they act or react you do not want to be pushed back, pushed back, and, have, and say, well, I don't think I can follow up this one. This one is too tough for me. There is the impact of the fearless presentation. You need to present the word of the Lord fearlessly. The Lord has given it to you. Give it to them. In 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 21. 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 20. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. And so Elijah said, If you count me as your enemy, I'm not your enemy. I'm coming to declare to you the way of the Lord. The plan of salvation. The need of repentance. The necessity of faith. I come to reveal to you the very mind of God. You have sold yourself to do evil. He told Ahab. And then he said, Behold, I will bring evil upon thee. And take away thy posterity. And will cut off from Ahab. Him that pieces against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And then he goes on and on and on in verse 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, we did sell himself to walk wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. And the man was not a man of his own mind. Actually, he wasn't such a tough figure, but there was a wife at home in the palace stirring him up, making him to do evil. But Elijah confronted him. And after that confrontation, look at verse 27. And it came to pass. When Ahab heard those words, that he rent his clothes, and he put sackcloth upon his flesh, and he fasted and lay in sackcloth and he went softly. And you may think hey, that man is so tough, that woman is so worldly, he is not even going to listen to the word you are bringing. How can you tell? Even Ahab, he softened, he came down, he humbled himself. And the fearless presentation of Elijah unto him actually did something and in verse 28 the word of the lord came to elijah the teach by saying seest thou how ahab humbles himself before me because he humbles himself before me i will not bring the evil in his days but in his son's days i will will i bring the evil upon his house he, spare, he wanted to spare him and he said, even as wicked as it was, because of this change, I'm not going to bring the evil in his state. The point is, as you are involved in the counseling, you don't be shy. And don't be afraid. You are deeper life. Yes, you are coming from deeper life. And they might have had some good things and some uh, not true things, uh, false things about you and about the church. Don't worry, just brush that aside and show them, reveal unto them the way of the Lord. In Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 20 there. Daniel chapter 4 verse 20. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, 
and the fruits thereof much and in it was meat for all under which the beast of the field dwelt and upon whose branches the fowls of heaven of the heaven at their habitation it is thou o king thou art grown and become strong for thy greatness is grown and reaches unto heaven and thy dominion to the end of the earth whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming coming down from heaven saying heal the tree down and destroy it yet leave the storm of the roots thereof in the earth even with a bunch of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven let its portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him this is the interpretation o king the decree is of the most high which is come upon my lord the king they shall drive thee out from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field and it shall make thee to eat the grass as oxen and it shall wet thee with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth thee to whomsoever he will you see that presenting the word is the word of the lord and the message is greater than the messenger is higher than the messenger as the source of the message is greater than the prophet himself so as you present the word of the lord to the people yes you'll do it with wisdom yes you are going to do it with love yes you are going to do it with understanding yet without fear in daniel chapter 5 daniel chapter 5 verse 17 then daniel answered and said before the king this uh, uh, the grandson another king let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another yet i will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation O thou king the most high god give nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor and for the majesty that he gave him all people nations and languages trembled and feared before him whom he would he slew and whom he would he kept alive and whom he would he set up and whom he would he put down and when his heart was lifted up and his mind hadn't been pride he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him and he was driven from the sons of men that his heart and his heart was made like the beast and the dwelling was with the his dwelling was with the wild asses they fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high god ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will and thou his son of belshazzar has not humbled thine heart though thou knewest all these but hast lifted up thyself against the lord of heaven and they have brought the vessels of the house before thee and thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them and thou hast praised the god of silver and of gold and of brass iron wood stone which see not nor hear nor know the god in whose hand thy breath is and whose are all thy ways as thou not glorified then was the part of the hand sent from him and this writing was written and this is the writing that was written many many take you for sin this is the interpretation of the thing many god has numbered thy kingdom and finished it concluded it take it thou art wage in the balances thou art found wanting paris the kingdom thy kingdom is divided and given to the meats and passions and the point here is daniel 
fearlessly presented the word to this man, even though the man was high. That's the calling of the Lord to you and to me. But you can only do that if you are filled with the Spirit of God. So, before you go to follow up those people, have some time to pray. Have some time to check up the scripture again. Tell the Lord to give the word to you. And for the Lord to give you the boldness to give the word out to the people that you are going to see. In John chapter 16... John 16, verse 17, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he's come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. That means then, when you have the spirit of God, you'll be able to declare the word of God. And when you declare the word of God, boldly and fearlessly, then the word will have effect, impact, influence on them. In Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 23, him by determined by being delivered by the determinate counsel and for knowledge of God have you taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain verse 24 whom God has raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was impossible it was not possible that he should be holding of it verse 36 therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. When they had this, they were preached in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent. And then we're told in verse 40, and with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself. From this unto our generation. And because of that fearless presentation of the word of God, many of them believed. And many of them actually came to the Lord. This is your chance. The Lord has appointed you. And many of our people who are not here today, uh, the Lord has appointed us. So reach out to these people who have given themselves and they say they have come to the Lord. We need to go to them. Don't deceive them. Don't water down the message give them the word of the Lord. Show them the way that leads to life eternal. Let's rise up and pray. What a great privilege you have. That young man standing up, the pastor said, we well, rise up to pray. Simple instruction, please obey. What a great privilege you have. Great privilege we have. To follow up these people, show them the way of the Lord. Why doesn't this woman in the Yoruba class stand up straight and show that you really want to pray? Talk to the Lord that the privilege the Lord has given you, you will not misuse that privilege. That none of those people that should get to the kingdom of God through your counseling, through your help, through your preaching will be lost. You need to sacrifice time. You need to boldly declare the truth of repentance and faith in Christ. And of course, you need to pray with them until they come into the kingdom. Bring them with the, into the body of Christ so that they can develop and grow. Show them how to grow in the Lord and what kind of life they ought to live now. Help them.